All set to go. Tim Pfeiffer holds the ball aloft to uh, start proceedings here at the Elizabeth Oval. It's top up against six. Central District on top. West Adelaide in sixth position. Perfect conditions. Green's got the footy, trying to barge his way clear. It's uh, pretty messy, and then not a lot of uh, positive footy happening at the moment. There's uh, some seven or eight players in there going in hard. What did you see then, Michael Aish? Peter Green just charging into the pack there, and that is a direct result of Gavin McMahon throwing his weight around early, which West obviously lacked last week. This is a big boy, McMahon, isn't he? There's Sir Green's a little chip pass toward left half forward, finds Ingerson. So Ingerson, about uh, two kicks from goal. He'd be about 85 metres out. When he goes back to kick, he'll be on the wing. Be warm for them out there today. Conway's in the goal square. Good chip pass. He's found Arnold. He was, uh, what, a metre in front of his opponent there. Far too easy. Too much latitude. There's Arnold's kick. It is a long one. Well up free toward... kick oh, up dear, forward dear. to the Central District player. And that is Wakeland for hanging on. So they've got a good chance here in the early stages to uh, register their uh, first score. So just getting a little uh, tight out there at the moment. Bit of a lull in proceedings. And uh, Wakeland, who's uh, played at fullback and up forward, been a good forward. Coffee's in the reserves. He shouldn't have too much trouble with this. He's five metres out and he bangs it through for the first goal of the match. He's not too happy about it. Just uh, voicing his disapproval at a couple of things there. First goal to Central. They lead one goal. West Adelaide yet to score. Well, never going to miss. Uh, easy as you like. And the West full back player in Patterson hanging on. Got to be disciplined. Don't give him away as easy as that. Back in the centre, and a magnificent day for football, round 23 at Elizabeth Oval, and the Bulldogs off to a good start. A couple of interesting moves, McKinnon's at full back for the Dogs, and he'll get in the action here as McMahon sweeps away from the centre of the ground, and he finds Wielden, who's lined up at centre half forward. Now Wielden has either Simister or Woosnam, Scott Lee, the Crows connection, well done by McKinnon. To Wine, to Ingerson, that's four, five, and back to McKinnon, all AFL, either ex-players or present, up towards the full forward line. Wakeland can't quite take it, then does in the end. Hands it back to Cook, who started with the roving duties as normal. This man's been at centre-half forward. Arnold to Ingerson. Would this be the perfect start as he pushes it up towards the line? Not quite taken down there by Cotton, I think it was. McKinnon comes out of half-back. Simpson, loss of feet. The Bulldogs are threatening, aren't they? Cook. A little throw out, and West Adelaide will relieve some pressure, if not temporarily, certainly for a little while, because they get it to centre wing. And Wielden, the Bulldogs turn it over though, Schwert, back to Laird, and away they go yes, again. Yes, uh, Laird now, good distance with the kick down, ground towards centre half forward, Healy was in front. Chance now for Kilpatrick uh, for the Bloods, the whistle goes, there's a free kick sorted out. After disposal, pretty soft in the end on Gurdham against Kilpatrick. Just a slight nudge after he kicked it. So West Adelaide about to make a bit of a charge forward. Here's Bannock with the uh, socks down. Kick. Yeah, good vision there, wasn't it? Chance now for Chandler. Gets it over toward Hamilton. Hamilton toward full forward. Outnumbered down uh, there was Woosnam. Where in the end, uh, it was uh, Simister. The target, but to the ball knocked over. Out of bounds, right forward pocket. Michael, a bit surprising to have uh, McKinnon on the fullback line. In some sense, yes, Stephen, but as we saw in his first attack on the ball, right from defence to uh, having a shot for goal, so it might work out pretty well for the Dogs. And that ball's gone off a boot, I think, and out of bounds on the full. Potter's making some directions and pointing out the spot. Stephen Hamilton will take it. Brian Herrera on screen. A very important man for the Bulldogs, playing at centre half back. And Anthony Ingerson is in the ruck. Last time I saw him out here against uh, Port Adelaide, I think it was. Yeah. He's dominated. Magnificent kick by Hamilton. That is a great start from the half-forward flanker. The scores are tied away, and we've played just five minutes of the first turn. That is a lovely kick, Stephen Hamilton. Have a look how he drops that. Perfect. Kicks it out in front of the goal. Bends it back beautifully. 
And Hamilton coming from North Adelaide hasn't been a bad pickup for the Bloods. West Adelaide lost to Norwood last week. Bad, uh, bad loss that one. They're battling to get into the five. So Ingerson storming in from the right. Fogden. Barrett gets a high kick. Doesn't go where the required distance. Wind. Just shepherding off the ball there. Oh, he just appeared to get one high, then gets on with it down toward Peter Green territory. Arnold gives it to Green in the end. And Green swings it around the corner into the forward pocket. It's very uh, wide and uh, rather ugly. Well, if the Bloods are going to have any chance today, they really have to hold the Bulldogs, particularly their midfield players. Last week, they were slaughtered by Nord. They have to pick up Wine, Gurdon, Potter, and Cook especially. McMahon from one back pocket to another. Patterson have to be quick. Wasn't quite quick enough. The kick uh, as a result, not as he would have liked. Chandler, good skills at half back. Runs Healy inside out, then gets the hand pass. It was a dead set hospital hand pass to McKinnon, who was under enormous pressure. Chandler's in trouble again, and they really messed that up. Well, he had uh, half an hour and he had to wait for a West teammate to get over there and support him. He did it pretty well to start with Chandler and McKinnon. Well, that's all he could do. Great tackle by Cotton, wasn't it? Good attack on the body. Gurdum tries to slip it through where there's a good number of Bulldog players. Bart Hamilton's up to the task. He does it well around the body. Didn't travel very far and the ball's found the boundary line. A couple of tall women out there, Michael Ash. We've got Healy being picked up by Chandler. Yes, Chandler last week playing on the wing also and uh, didn't have a good game. No, mixed success, wasn't there? Kieran Spawn at centre half back. He's missing this afternoon. Here is Chandler. To Carlson. Simpson. And the entry was very poor because Ingerson sat back and read it the best. Scott Stevens look alike is Laird. Stevens, by the way, played in the reserves today. Work it out with Reimers and Schwert. And back to Ingerson, who has been in absolutely everything so far in the first eight minutes of this game, up towards half forward. Peter Green's done okay. He's found some space. Short pass. Wakeland well taken. Miller certainly made him <laughs> Miller certainly made him work for that. It was a great grab in the end. He's done exceptionally well when he's gone up to full foot. Thought it was Gabriel Ghetto for a moment. <laughs> it was a pretty good kick, Wakeland. He'll be looking into the sunshine. And the angle's fairly acute. See what he can do. Has a very good look. And it just slides across the face of goals. Touch and go. Touch and go for an out of bounds on the fuller or behind. He's got the behind, so the Bulldogs have made a break. 1-1. One, one. Just that later, one straight goal. Scott Simister up forward. Kicked one last week. I really need plenty out of him today. Morris was also out with a shoulder injury. I should say the flu back into the side. Patterson goes short to kill Patrick. Deep in his own defensive area. He's got signs. Well, no, he decided to go to McKinnon territory. It was a bad option, though, because they've turned this around spectacularly. And Gurdon from 45 metres out, he misses to the left-hand side. Had a bit of a chance there, Michael, didn't they? Perhaps uh, could have taken another bounce. Well, he caught it exactly right, Mark. He should have picked off signs initially. Had McKinnon there. Probably a bit late. Not a good kick. And you do not want to give the Bulldogs any chance because they'll tear you apart. So Patterson to bring the ball back into play. To the far side. And it's well taken at half back there by... It's like Brooke Fogden having a bit of a roll around on the ground. The big fellow. Very tall man is Brooke. About 195 centimetres tall. He's got Symes, who's equally tall, just by the way. Centre wing, good looking kick, a drop punt that carries probably 55 metres oh. and well taken by Scott Sinister. Plenty of opposition there. Have a look, he's three back and he grabs it. Windsor and Ingerson. And this man can kick a ball, kick it from outside 50, warming up. They shouldn't have any problems with this. So Sinister for number two. West Adelaide's number two, that is. Has a good look and kicks it. So the Bloods are away to a good start. Two goals, Central are 
He's kicked 56 for the season. And last fortnight kicked 10 for the Blood against the Panthers. Good work by Symes. Gets it in really. Should not have got anywhere near it. Simister just judges it a little bit better than his opponents. He has been known to take a spectacular mark or two. Scott Simister, that was a beauty at the back. Two goals, West Adelaide. One goal, two, eight points. Central District. Here's McMahon with uh, good strength. Kicks up toward Morris. Couldn't control it. I think he was waiting for Hamilton to go in then. This is uh, Laird in trouble, out number two or three. Hamilton's going to get it in the end. Bit of pressure on him. Kicks inside 50. Simister lost sight of it. Scotty Lee hit him on the noggin. It ricochets. A chance for Wielden. Opportunity now for Barrett, and he misses. Series of uh, mistakes there, and uh, West Adelaide, Michael, almost capitalising. 2-1-1-2. One, one, two. Well, there's no question they're showing more in Devon than they did last week, which they need to. One point off fifth spot, four percentage points better than the Panthers. So they're a chance. It's a big game for them, Stephen, isn't it? Sure is. After, as Michael was saying, a very disappointing outing last week. Their pride was dented. And as I suggested this morning, maybe just not a complete effort in terms of showing some care for the club. So they're really on the line today as Arnold takes it on centre wing. Sporting the blue and mouth guard, half forward right. They're doing it well in the air, aren't they? Healy is a good, tall, rangy half forward flanker come uh, wingman. Running with the flight of the ball was... The agitator, Scott Lee, couldn't take it. West Adelaide relieved some pressure now into the path, though, of Gurdon back into the side today. Gives some ground. Windsor. This is where West Adelaide need to put the pressure on. They can't afford to have Central pinpoint their kicks. Wine. Because with time, they'll pick them off perfectly, other than the fact that Wankland didn't take it. Well, Jimmy Wine, as we said, another good pickup. And there's... 300 odd kicks for the season, an average of 18 per game. That's what you have to do if you're a rover. 12 and a half minutes, first quarter, nothing in this. Cook going in, that looked like a throw, but the umpire didn't seem to think so. Barrett bounds away, boots it into midfield. The doctor's got it in front of Reimers, defensive side of centre now. It's a, a bit of movement there from Godden, also out storms Woosnam. Oh, Godden, the ball bounced over his head. Lee getting another touch. McKinnon, who'd love to be playing for the Crows tonight. Long kick towards centre half forward. Gee whiz, that was uh, Carlson in all sorts of trouble. Couldn't control it. McMahon in the end. Boots it into midfield. And a, another tall player there. And that's Rymers. Gets it to McKinnon. Chip passes it. Shocker. So they turn it around again. And this is Carlson. Carlson's kick to half forward. Where the doctor is lurking. And the doctor finds Carlson. Carlson flees the scene and then puts it up towards the scoring zone. It was well spoiled away by Ingerson at the back to Potter. Couple of runners. One of them is Laird. Time. And then barrels it forward. Picks up Stephen Schwert. Schwert also has time. And as a result, perhaps too much time. Some turnovers. Sorry, Stephen. There's been some turnovers. They have. Take them a little while to find their feet, I guess, in terms of the heat, or the warmth. Towards the full forward line, Simister's perfectly positioned. Can't quite take it. I thought he had that, Michael. One's gone straight through from behind. Well, got both hands to it, no question about that, but just dropped his head towards the end there. Eyes not on the ball. But he should have snaffled that. McKinnon in the back pocket. Needs to uh, get things moving in a hurry as the uh, quarter is running dry. Here's Healy. Pace, tall, rangy play, kicks toward left half forward, but uh, Symes in the hole. Well, there's a loose man over here. This is Fogden from the centre, bangs it up toward left half forward. Doc Wielden now from 50 metres. That's a very good kick in terms of distance, but he's offline to the right hand side. Well, if I was Philip Morris, I would be absolutely livid with the doctor on that occasion. He's kicked from 55. Morris was pretty well by himself, just sitting in the pocket. Should have just put it down his throat. 2-3 plays 1-2. Seven points the difference. The umpire 
Giving Windsor a bit of a hurry up. Finds Brian Herrera. They've got a nice balance, haven't they, the Bulldogs? Plenty of height with Herrera, Windsor, Ingerson, Rymers. Plenty of pace around the deck as well. Some chunkiness in the centre square. And Huey Rymers is one of the talls whose performance over the final series is going to be very important for the Bulldogs towards centre wing. Cott has done well to force his way into this uh, very powerful central side. McKinnon qualifies today for the finals, talking about those. To half forward where Gurdon was playing on. Sirens pushed him and I felt that despite Rogers' intention to play on, it wasn't a bad umpiring decision to let it stay as it was. Cook. Just Adelaide work it out and McKinnon ends up with it. Spoiled away pretty well on centre wing by Simister, who's covering some ground. Doing a bit of work, Scott Simister. Has played in defence. So that's a bit rough. We're just going for a bit of a ride as Raymond. Hmm. It was Windsor. Here's Potter. Healy. So they're on the march here, Central District. Healy has a pot shot from 50 metres. Good kick, not quite the distance. Accuracy certainly there, but forced through for behind. Too easy out of the throw in from Potter. And Symes is about. 10 metres away and really didn't offer a chase at all until he thought he had to. So Patterson brings it back into play. Grandstand side where Symes is lurking. And he takes a good mark right out in front of the eyes. Good looking kick also to Wielden, who had a crack at it right out in the front. Best intention. Cotton, quick as a flash. Picked off by McKinnon. Well done, Robin. Very clever, and also well done by Lee, but unfortunately for the Bulldogs, it ended up back in Chandler's hands. That's probably not the best option, Darren. Well, he's disappointed too. Well, he worked hard for it. And had a couple of options, maybe throwing it onto his boot, kick over the line, but it didn't eventuate, and the handball just wasn't spot on. Comes out to Lee. And Barrett. Cook has his ball smothered as well, and it goes across the line. One goal of difference. 17 odd minutes into this first term and it's 2-3 to 1-3. West Adelaide a good break. It's a bit of a surprise. West Adelaide uh, the underdog here you would uh, expect. Central have won a swag of games uh, this year. In fact they've won uh, eight of their last nine. So they've, uh, they've been in fine form right throughout the season in particular the last uh, couple of months. Alan Stewart has got them going just nicely as the finals approach. Throw in, right forward pocket for the Bloods. Fogden knocks it across to Hamilton. Hamilton's kick out of bounds on the full. We saw him kick a beauty from uh, even deeper in that pocket, Michael, but uh, not that time. Yes, some would say it was a bit of a, a fluke, that one earlier, but uh, spot on, straight through the centre. That one, under pressure, just couldn't bring it back quickly enough. The result out of bounds on the full. And they have attacked most of this term, the Bloods, for little reward, really. Huey Rymers nearing 100 games. Bit of a milestone. Very versatile man also. And speaking of versatility, falls right into the arms of Ingerson. Potter would be disappointed with that. Back to Ingerson. They put themselves under a bit of pressure. But McKinnon is cool. Very cool. And finds a raider, grandstand side. Scott Lee's across the top. Small wager that it goes there, and it does. Back to Herrera. Just finessing a bit much at the moment, the Bulldogs. Cook has got it on centre wing towards Laird. Not his forte above the head. Got him. Short pass. It's OK. It's found Bannock. And Bannock goes yes. to half forward where Fogden is. Fogden plays it on. Not a particularly good kick by Brook. Pretty average indeed, and McKinnon has repelled yet another attack. He's done well in this first quarter, McKinnon. Yes, he has. Cook gets it across to Schwert, and Schwert uh, pushes it up toward left half forward. McMahon almost a spectacular mark. Here's Danger. The door opens for Central District. Healy runs inside 50, left footer, and puts it through. For has he? No, it just swung away at the last moment. Excellent build up, but uh, just offline. It was heading in the right direction there, Michael, and uh, just. Uh, yeah, good song, that, isn't it? And uh, just. 
moved and deviated at the uh, last moment. Well, it did, and uh, that is a direct result of Fogton up forward, just not getting the ball on quick enough. Barrett was in position, but they just sum up the, the wrong option, continually the Bloods. And the ball's found the boundary line. Grandstand side, a very parochial Central District crowd. I'd love to see their beloved Bulldogs go all the way in 1995. There's a calm air of expectation out here. When you wander through the crowd, Grant Filkey's getting ready to come well onto the ground for the first time today. Bit of a surprise, Mark, that he's on the bench. Well, he yes, it certainly is. He's what played 336 games for the club. Club captain. He's had a lot of hamstring injuries to date, but a fit Grantly Filkey would certainly get the possessions. Some talk that his disposal lets him down a little bit as Chandler comes off, but he's been a great player for the Bloods. Scott Lee. Starting to get some possessions now as Healy on the man who was just taken from the ground in Chandler. My bet is that Filkey will go straight to centre wing. He certainly wasn't West Adelaide's worst player last week at the parade. And what was a fairly inglorious performance all up. He's played 21 and a little bit. Minutes of this first term as Conway does battle with Symes. A couple of fairly substantial boys there. Carlson. Big pack of players and the umpire has a say in it. What impact the temperature, Michael? At this minute, it wouldn't be a great deal, Stephen, but as the day goes on, there's no question that will have some sort of effect. Filky gets a touch. Only been on a, a minute or so. Potter standing over the pack. Important, therefore, to make a break early in the game. If it gets warm later. Yes, I'm sure that uh, on one side, if they could get four or five up, particularly at three quarter time, that last quarter, it could be a telling effect on the game. Gurdon goes in hard, does lose the footy though. Kilpatrick from half back towards centre half forward. Sheer strength there by Laird, got rid of Morris. Did it easily in the end, then runs into the midfield corridor. Good kick. Well, it was okay in terms of. Uh, Distance and direction, but Symes was able to pick it off. A series of mistakes. Can they capitalise here, West Adelaide? Short chip pass is a horror one. Morris was calling for it. So too was Simister. Simister picks out Godden, and Godden now will take a shot from about 35 metres. Well, he's very fortunate, Godden, to be able to have a kick for goal. As I said about five minutes ago, we'll have a look here. Beautiful work by Simister, but Woosnan had. Morris, I think it was, again, just sitting all by himself. He's kicked at 45 degrees. He's got his kick from 35 metres out. The umpire doesn't uh, do a lot of moving. He uh, just indicates a goal. So they uh, work it out OK in the end. West Adelaide go further in front. 3-3 three, three to 1-4. Yes, and big man Scott Simister has worked very hard in this first term. Competing, as has Doc Wilden. And a lovely kick by Godden. So the Bloods, they'd be pretty happy with this first turn. It's been a good quarter for them, hasn't it? 3-3 mm. three, three, plays 1-4. The Bloods have just a little of the breeze from left to right of screen. The man with the cap on in the middle of the ground is umpire Tim Pfeiffer. He sets it down. West Adelaide get a break. Inside 50. Well done by Scott Lee. Sat back and took a pretty good mark. It's only early, of course, but... South Adelaide are going to know the outcome of this game tonight when they go into battle with Port Adelaide. And if, in fact, West Adelaide win it, what great pressure there will be on the Panthers to do, do the job tonight against the Magpies. Fresh from a rest here is Wilden. Couldn't quite this time. Simister's out the back. Will take something special, although the provision of support is pretty good by Wilden. Great attack on the body by uh, Windsor. And Simister's gone for holding the ball. A bit of fisty cuffs. Well, I disagree with that decision. As we see, the Doctor and Windsor having a bit of a throw at each other, but uh, as Simister has fallen, he's dropped the ball without being tackled, and the guys actually tackled him, and they've paid hold the ball. Getting pretty nasty there with Wielden and Gurdon, and Wielden's still going on with this, and it is getting rather nasty here as Windsor comes in again. There's fists going all over the place. 
Well, mainly pushing and shoving, that's what they ought to do, is just throw a couple. There's a, few, there's a few fists there, let me tell you, Michael. I think you might have misread that, Michael. There's a couple of very, very strong attacks on the player. Here's Morris getting on with the game. That's what they should be doing, Hamilton. Attacking side of centre, far side of the ground, boots it towards Simister. Good bounce, he did gather it nicely then, swings it round the body, it's a high kick. This is close, and what is it going back? <laughs> He's kicked a goal, it is a beauty. It was a terrific goal, it was very high, right around the body, 4-3-1-4. Four, four. Well, he's worked, and that's a good take in the end. Look at that, round the body. And I would think he's a very tired man at the moment. There it is, not a bad body on the boy either. Very strong unit. He's a big lad. Good break for the Bloods. 4-3 plays 1-4. We're into time on in the first quarter. And Harade has gone to pick up Wielden. I think a few wanted to pick him up, Stephen. Yes, well, the doctor made his presence felt. Let's put it that way. As Gurdham emerges from the centre, gives it over towards Stephen Schwert. He's a very strong worker. And that ball's holding up into the breeze. I think you'll find in that that there is a, well, a couple of goals, perhaps, in it. Arnold. Back to Schwert. I'd love to get another one or two, though, before quarter time. Green can't take it. Kept a plan it though. Did it very well by keeping it in front. Pushed forward. Gee, they throw themselves into it the pretty tough. And there's going to be a free kick paid to Simpson. This is Scott Simpson in the budget. It's actually Matt Simpson. And the man on screen is Greg Mellor. So we'll sort all that out. Number four, a Gregory Mellor. Symes. A bit more pumped up this week, West Adelaide, that's for sure. <sighs> Herrera ran into a veritable wall of players and then went to the far side. Picked out Wine. Now, Wine has a little bit of space. There's Shepherd plenty of space. Off the ball. Everybody's stopped because the umpire's blown his whistle. They did that last week. The Shepherd off the ball and uh, hard one to pick within five metres. So Fogden now with a footy. Far side, half back, bangs it to the wing. Hamilton having to slide into the ball. West Adelaide, can they score a late goal in this term? It has been a very good quarter for them. Hamilton pushing his uh, teammates further down ground, then kicks it. Oh, right over the top was Wielden. No, it was uh, Woosnam. He gives away a free kick. Umpire says play on. Schwert, left foot. And they turn it around again because Fogden will uh, bang this back from that far wing. So it's uh, there's been a lot of mistakes, hasn't there, in this quarter? There has. Good deal of pressure, though, to be fair. The attack on the player is pretty good from both sides, as Woosnam's the only player with half a chance. The ball beats him to the line. 4-3 playing 1-4, 17 points the difference. And as you see, we are three minutes. Into time on, as Ingerson goes into battle. A bit interested that Morris would be playing at half forward. I'm much more interested that he'd be going for the ruck work. Amazing when you've got Scott Simister down there. Anyway, mine is not the reason why. As Morris played state football at halfback earlier in the year. So looking for a bit of bite. Good mark taken out there by Stephen Schwert. A little subdued, the central crowd. As Schwerty wheels it towards midfield. The target was Arnold. And I just have the feeling at the moment through half four that the Bulldogs are missing the competition of Lures. To be fair to West Adelaide, they're getting more of the ball, but I like Central District when they've got Lures or Rymers at centre half forward. And Arnold in the ruck, but Coach Alan Stewart obviously feels that Anthony Ingerson's a better shot in the ruck. Still West Adelaide with this lead. Girdham, meant for Schwert. Bannock taps it cleverly to Carlson. 85 metres from goal. Woosnam was the target. McKinnon. And the ball trickles over the line. So this is a, a shell shock crowd, you would think. They're just waiting for something to happen. But uh, it's been a good quarter by West Adelaide. So much to play for in sixth position. So they're really playing for a spot in the five if South Adelaide lose. Rhymers. And Grant Coffey once again, fellas. Uh, Michael, in the uh, reserves after so showing so much promise early in the year. 
doubt that he's got a bit of uh, talent, Grant Coffey, but um, just not consistent enough. And the Bulldogs have plenty of depth, so they can afford to play him in the twos. And Richardson's in there as well. Well, look, let's go through this. Oh, Stevens. Stevens, Richardson, Cotton, Vardy, Green. Plenty of them down there. And the Bulldogs are under pressure. And the first 30 minutes of this game has gone. West Adelaide have made the break on ABC Sport. They are 4 3 27. A 17 point break over the Bulldogs, who are 1 4 10. ABC Sport bringing you the first bounce of the second term here from Elizabeth Oval, round 23, and the Bloods have made a very, very important break. Albeit with the assistance of a little bit of breeze. Their acid test now comes in the next 30 minutes. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot of positional changes made around the deck. Other than McKinnon's come from the goalmouth to a little further out. He's picking up Hamilton. Central's barrel at forward. Finishes up with Green to space. Which way is this one going to bounce? Good luck. Well done by Wakeman. Attack the football. And was well rewarded for it in the end. Well done. Nice slick little touch from Arnold towards Cook. Gives some ground. Finds Wakeman. Still messing around with it. But to be fair to uh, West Adelaide, it's because of the pressure. Tough decision on Mellor. Yeah. Went from one man to another, didn't yeah. he? Worked hard. A fraction too late hanging on to Cook. But uh, you reward the guy for effort. Have a look at this. There's one. And, uh, well, I've seen him let go worse than that. Anyway. No wonder you didn't get a Guernsey to the umpire's dinner this year. Should have won three. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Cook, from 49 and three-quarter metres, has a look. And it's gone very close, but not close enough. Through for one behind. Yes, Cook, he's a live eye up there. Can play on the ball as well. Mainly a uh, forward pocket specialist and a uh, pretty good job at that. So Pato with a footy at full back. Decides to go to the half back flank on uh, this, uh, the members side. McMahon had it knocked away from him at number two or three to one. Barrett, pack tackle. And umpire David Elliott will get things underway again. On the kick out there when they kicked to McMahon, McMahon did not have one player going for the crumb where Central District had three. Jimmy Wind in trouble, just a short kick, didn't go anywhere really. Potter, they're into his back. Oh, eventually, they uh, work it away, West Adelaide. This is Carlson. The Carlson on centre wing. Looking for an option, there aren't too many of them. Keeps it low. At the back is Wielden, in trouble, and now a throw in to take place. It was Woosnam. Very easy to sit up here in the stand and pick because we may have a better view, but uh, he had Fogden all by himself in the centre. Could have gone direct to goal. Ingerson beaten by Fogden on this occasion. Filkey had the body over the ball, first access to it. Wasn't bad either. Hamilton, it's a tough one to take. Even on the bounce, Godden should have the leg speed, but the bounce just didn't suit him. Got it back, however, and then looked in short. Had a good look, did it pretty well. Kilpatrick has Woosnam and decides against it. Oh, he kicked this, wouldn't he, surely? He's put himself under pressure to do so because Woosnam was a long way free. A bit of a natter to himself about it. Wouldn't this be a big goal in terms of the scoreline? I think the breeze has dropped a little too, just quietly. So he's going to have to take still just a little of the left post. Head down, punches into it. And just from the side of the boot, so it goes offline and through for one behind. So West Adelaide are 4-4. Four, four. The Bulldogs are 1-5. Scotty Lee about to do the uh, kicking in from full back. Straight down the middle. Looking for Herrera, totally outnumbered in that situation. Bannock around the corner to Woosnam. Needs to judge it, overruns it. As you can see, he's got plenty of time and space. Boots it laterally. Looking for Fogden. Rymers backs himself, gets into trouble. Filkey trips. Oof. Big bump there by Leon Filkey. 
good and clever hand pass. McKinnon, has he got the speed? Yes, he has. He accelerates through the centre. It's a long, penetrating kick. Up they go. No mark taken down there. West Adelaide under a lot of pressure now in defence all of a sudden. Cotton in trouble. But they work it away, West Adelaide. They do it well, didn't panic. And Patterson bangs it up toward the wing. Well, the wind ran all around it, didn't he? Speaking of running around it, Carlson did exactly the same. There is enormous pressure out there at the moment, befitting of a finals game. And you'd expect that because West Adelaide need to win. Desperately to win as Patterson comes, barnstorming through half-back and picks off a Brooke Fogden. Fogden has Simpson trying to be a bit cute. Finds him though. The problem with all that is that it stalled the play. I'm not sure what you're trying to do there, Brooke. You'll give it away. It's exactly what you've done. And if I was Matthew Simpson, I would be very, very dirty about that. I guess he's trying to exercise a bit of muscle, but there's a difference between doing it right and doing it very poorly. Barrett chimes in, does it okay, gives it to Symes. Way up towards Simister, but the numbers are there for the Bulldogs, and Ingerson takes it. Here's Simister trying to do something spectacular. Brian Herrera hustling and bustling at centre half back. Very unobtrusive player, but a very effective one. Scotty Lee, who uh, accelerates, but not quite as quickly as he might have liked. He was being run down. Melor picks it off. Barrett, so they turn it around again. We've seen this a few times. Fogden doesn't mess it up this time, gives it to Godden. 75 metres out, here's Simister at the back or from the side. Herrera again, patrolling the area very well. He's policing that uh, centre-half back region and uh, making things rather awkward. Potter, shocker, out of bounds on the full. Well, I tell you, both sides at the moment playing very wide of each other. They're getting plenty of the ball uncontested. But when they go into the forward lines, they just can't make a decent fist of it and hit someone on the chest with a clean play. Carlson's kick is taken by Herrera. No panic stations yet. We just get the feeling for the Bulldogs they might need another different option up forward. Arnold's not really doing the trick, neither is Conway up there. I wonder whether Rymers might not be a suitable option. Meanwhile, West Adelaide have gone into attack. Rymers, of course, is picking up Simister, but Simister probably could be adequately picked up by Herrera, who has currently got a smaller player in Hamilton. So just maybe the balance not quite right at the moment. We know that Rhymers can provide an option. So time will tell. Alan Stewart, not prone to panicking. Will probably give them a little longer to settle to the task. But if Simister kicks this one, they're going to go to 23 points down. And it will be a little hurtful. Simister can kick the ball a long, long way. And from 50, he won't have a problem with distance, even into the breeze. Pretty good looking kick. But he's just missed. Not a murmur from the crowd. No, gee, it's a quiet crowd, isn't it? Not saying a thing. 4 5 1 5. I guess that's the reason, though, Michael, the scoreboard. Well, one would think, Mark. Well, you wouldn't think it'd be anything else, sure. But um, Simister there, he has done a fair bit to date, but Godner gave him two options there in the pocket. All he had to do was pick him off, and he could kick from 25 rather than 55. So Windsor decides to go very wide. Healy picked him off pretty well. Very quick wingman Healy, down from that position at the moment. Forces it right up into that wing area. This is a Laird. Now Jimmy Wind. Down ground to the left half forward position. Up goes Wakelin. Couldn't control it. West Adelaide again try and knock it away and work it out of that dangerous area. Filky. McKinnon was the man doing some good work on his hands and knees. Brooke Fogden smack bang in the middle of the Elizabeth Oval. So they work it well. Carlson ends up with it. 75 metres, indirect, but they are in front down there. Wielden gets a second bite at the cherry. Morris, Wielden again. Morris in there as well. And uh, just a bit indirect there, Michael, but uh, I guess they were in reasonable positions. Yeah, it's not a bad effort, but uh, Woosnan just not doing enough up forward at the moment. Uh, Jeff Morris has got Chandler on the bench. Have a better option with Chandler in a full forward position at the moment or throwing Simister back there. Carlson to Barrett. Central's just not getting anything going at the moment. Worry some time for Alan Stewart. They're attacking very strongly and a free kick's been given away. Working his way well out of half back as Herrera to the middle of the ground. Spectacular take by Cotton. 
really starting to establish himself in the side. Gives it to Healy, another of the youngsters, and Healy got cleaned up for his trouble. Gave it back towards Jared. And Jared's picked off beautifully, Michael Wakeland. That is a much cleaner entry. And he leads so well, Michael Waitland. Very quick, good hands. Green. And uh, who is it, Bannock or McMahon? McMahon. Really having a wrestle. Awesome. Rephrase that. They're having a bit of a box on. Wakeland, 50 metres out. You need a score there, Michael. A big one. Well, Jimmy Wind had moved into 25 metres out with no opponent also. It's happened both ends, and players have preferred to kick from 55. There's Patterson's kick. It is a good one. Symes late on the scene. Healy, another entry here for Central District, but it's uh, cut off. Short-circuited by Barrett, who decides to go by hand to Patterson, who's been around for a long, long time. Played a lot of footy. Fogden running the same way as the footy. As a result, couldn't quite take it cleanly enough. Another turnaround, Ingerson. Oh. Spotted uh, Wine, went over his head. Carlson played in a grand final a number of years ago on the wing, out wide. Fogden can't quite control it, the big man. Here's Marty McKinnon. Gives it to Healy. Another left footer inside the 50. Out storms Arnold. Simpson. It's the hand pass. Symes short. That's okay. Mellor. Got it from McKinnon, who's, like Patterson, been around for a long, long time. Mellor distributes the ball up toward the half-forward line now for West Adelaide. Well done there by uh, Kilpatrick. He was outnumbered. In the end, there was nothing doing for him because uh, he was just uh, all over the place. Now Lee, and Lee boots it towards centre half-forward for the uh, Bulldogs. Off hands, wine, half a chance. Left leg, box and get inside. Now has a look from 48 metres and pops it up there. It's going to be every good chance to score another one. He has got it finally, and the Bulldogs score their second goal, 11 or 12 minutes it is, into the second turn. Yes, Wesselay defending well, but uh, great work by Lee. And the crumb there, Cook over ran it. Jim Wine just summed it up beautifully, just propped around McMahon. Kick from 45. Wakeland just shepherds it through. Good goal to that, Dogs. So back in the centre. And the hatted Tim Pfeiffer. Probably a good option today. Kilpatrick bangs it long and low. Chance for them to respond very quickly. Morris disappointed with that. Well out of bounds on the full. Well, if I was sitting there with Jeff Morris, there was no doubt he would be livid with the way West are using the ball up forward. They're getting plenty of it down there. Mm. They just can't capitalise whatsoever. Should be a lot further in front, shouldn't they? They should. Central aren't getting much run through that midfield, are they? Not much from Gurdham in this term, or indeed from Potter. This time they've got it the centre wing, though, where Green is lurking. And then when they get it up the front, it's not quite as potent as you'd like, so the Bulldogs have a test as Cook sends it to within 48 metres and Wakeland is right on the mark. He has a beautiful lead. Akin to Football Park, the expanse is here and he's going to be a very valuable player over the next month. This, that was a big long run, wasn't it? 25, 30 metres. The good money is that this man will be recruited or drafted as a certainty over November. Important kick, Michael. 51 metres out. Absolutely perfect. So the dogs are on the march now. They get their third on the board. Yes, Michael Wakeman. As we've said, a lot of full back. Green and McMahon having a good contest. And Cook provides it a run, which he does so well. And look at the kick. He just put it out in front. Wakeman made the extra yardage. And a beautiful kick from 50. So all of a sudden, a sense of urgency. Yes, it was a beauty, wasn't it? Kicked out about 65 metres. And uh, within a twinkling, the home side is back in business and the crowd here is starting to become quite enthusiastic and involved in the game. Filkey, Hamilton in trouble. Watkins, that's Ben Watkins over the top to Filkey. 75 metres from goal, disposal. It is important and it's good. 
because Woosnam's on the end of it. And Filky's kick spot on. And Young Dean, he kicked a bag earlier on in the year against the Panthers, I think it was, six or seven, along with the Doctor. This would be handy for West Adelaide. A responsive goal. Woosnam, 35 metres out. And what's he done with that? He's kicked it across the face. And he's booted it behind. Yes, well, every shot is an important one for the Bloods, particularly in this second term. I think Alan Stewart will boot a few behinds at half time. Disappointed with this dog outfit at the moment. They're a little sluggish. McKinnon's been one of the better performers, very polished as always. It squeezes out towards Healy on centre wing, who hasn't been bad either. Wind. Nifty. A very nice. It was also well done, though, by the man who was marking him in Simpson. Wine finishes up with it. That ball curls back with the drop punt and falls into the arms of Brian Herrera. Herrera plays it on. Green's going to be confronted with a couple of players. Great presence of mind to Cotton. Straighten it up, Jarrett, and have a look, big fella. Turns around and now goes with the awkward left leg and nails it. Three in a row to the Dogs. They get to within uh, seven points. Well, they've kicked three in five minutes. And that's good work by Cotton. It's a very good mark overhead, Jared Cotton. Hands out in front. Make that to within one point. And he spins around God. That's a pretty ordinary attempt. <clears throat> Didn't really attempt to tackle him whatsoever. Crowd starting to become involved now. There's no doubt about it. They're right back in business. Alan Stewart doesn't generally show a lot of emotion. Along with the former Best and Ferris winner, Terry Moore, on the foreground. Tony Mann is a chairman of selectors at the top. So West Adelaide under all sorts of siege here. This will be an important entry out of the middle. When we get the footy eventually. Conditions warm as we've already mentioned. So we'll get to have some tired players you would think at the end of uh, the four quarters. Here's Ingerson. Watkins is the man who will be storming in from the right. There he is, Benny Watkins. And the two rucks about to go to it. Ingerson and Watkins. Overrunning it as Healy. It's a scramble in the middle. Another ball up. Umpire's wearing the numbers to make it easier for identification. That's Ron Bettridge. Another bounce. Watkins and Ingerson. Ingerson might have won that. Watkins does well on the second attempt. Well done by Barrett. That was excellent work. Killed Patrick. Ends up uh, with a long kick. Simister at the back trying to do the spectacular thing again, Michael. Gives away a free kick. Well, he was, but let's have a look at this. Uh, oh, no, he's given the free for the push. I thought it might have been against Simister. But Windsor, just a slight push in the back. Very undisciplined. You just don't give him away as easy as that, particularly when you're in an attack. Oh, well, a boots it uh, out of the danger zone, but uh, I think it's about to head back into that direction again because Carlson's got it. McKinnon. Good kick by McKinnon, and the mark has been taken. Kilpatrick. Good juggling mark there by Kilpatrick. So uh, another important entrance into the forward line for West Adelaide. Here we go. Oh, he boots it in direct again. Up goes Simister. He was the target. Oh, dear. What's he going to get? Is he getting a free kick this time? Soft as that. Explain that one, Stephen. I thought he raked the arms. Let's have a look. Oh, dear. That's just a genuine contest in Australian rules football in the air. So Scotty Simister, the 22-year-old, well, he'd love to uh, get this one through because uh, Central have stormed back into this game. An important kick as half-time is looming. Let's ride it with him. Scotty Simister. 35 out, tight angle, way across the face of goal, and Ben Watkins has taken a big mark. He's on a tight angle. A bit closer, Michael. Yes, uh, good grabbing that in the end, coming mm. in from the side of the pack. I don't know how good a shot a goal he is. He's going to have to rip through a uh, check side or a mm. left foot around the body. Decided to go with a shaved head. That's becoming fashionable. Michael Aish also in that uh, bracket. Let's have a look. 
Can he thread this through from a very, very tight angle? No, he's not going to do that because he gives it off to the good doctor. And Wielden now, would you back him from there, Michael? Oh, you would, but very loose by Herrera there. Mm. Gee, all by himself, the doctor, and uh, he's taken a run up to the doctor here. He's, what, 40 metres away <coughs> at the moment. Involved in a bit of a scuffle in the first quarter. Letting a few uh, Central District players know that he was about, about the place. So here comes Wielden. Plenty of concentration. 35 out, long run up, drop punt, looks pretty good, it's a goal. Well, that took an age, didn't it? From the uh, Watkins mark to uh, the kick there by Wielden, but they finally got it. Five, six, four, five, a bit more breathing space. Well, it's good that the youngster had presence of mind just to hold and wait, and Wielden with a beautiful kick. Has no problems with the accuracy. So the blood's well in this, and... Uh, Probably want to go in, I would say, well, when you talk later on in the game, as we said earlier, three or four up at three-quarter time. Seven points the margin. West Adelaide lead. Five minutes from time on, an important time for the Bulldogs. As Bannock pushes it forward, only as far as Stephen Schwert, whose duel with Carlton has been fascinating. To half forward, and it's spoiled across the line. He's done all right, Cotton. Yes, you, you pray, you've sung his praises, Stephen, but he has done well, hasn't he? He's fought his way into the team at a crucial time of the year, too. It's a great time of the year to do it. Competition for spots is intense as Gurdam tries to barge his way through. He's not going to get it his own way, though, because the umpire's called for a bounce. There's not a lot of grass on this Elizabeth Oval at the moment in some patches. And where they're at at present is one of those the legacy of some of the wetter weather a few weeks ago. Potter is taken over by a number of hungry bloods who take the ball and flee. The numbers are there. Kilpatrick ignored all of them and then went up there on his own. Good spot at the back by Wisdom. Just cleared him though. Still a chance though because Herrera ran over the ball. Drags it back. Not quite far enough though. Out of He's bounds on the full. Kilpatrick, good work. The bloods. Potter caught cold. Umpire let it go on. And Kilpatrick Ran with the ball as far as he could, and Woosnan creating the option, but uh, really can't get into it at the moment. This is big Brian Herrera, who's been uh, very good in defence for Central District. There's another man who's been pretty good in defence for them too, and that's uh, Huey Ryan. This does play out forward, though. Back with Herrera. So a lull in proceedings as we wait for the footy to be retrieved. He's got it now, Big Brian. And then boots it away from the back pocket. Watkins in best position. Slaps it close to the boundary line. The discipline thing, Potter. Trying desperately and uh, quite spectacularly to uh, do something about the trajectory of that footy. Out of bounds, another throw in. West Adelaide lead by seven points. Watkins and Ingerson, Hamilton. Potter on his backside. And they tumble over the top of him and there'll be another ball up. So another lull in proceedings here, Michael. There was a big burst there, wasn't there? Yes, from uh, Central. Nearly at time on in this second term. And uh, number 18, Stephen Hamilton for the Bloods. He's done pretty well to date. It's McKinnon. Across the top, and he's got Lee, who I thought deftly kept it in play, but it's gone across the line. Out of bounds in the shadows, give the players a chance to get a bit of respite. Has he played his last game for the Crows, Stephen? I fear that he may have, but if you were to ask for my opinion about whether that's correct or not, I don't think it is. I think he's found his feet at that level. He's a tough competitor. Crows need his experience, but word has it that he may have played his last game. We might have said the same about Rodney Maynard, but he's back in. Good to see Rocket back as well. Ben Watkins, he's got himself a free kick. Central crowd around us are just a little bemused by it. Short pass. No. It's not his forte, Benny. Disposal of the football, is it? It's a fair, uh, fairly basic skill, though. You'd think you'd uh, need to work on it a bit. Five six plays four five seven points in it. We're on the doorstep of time on. 
Watkins. I'll tell you one thing he can do is hustle and bustle. Lee, awkward kick and an awkward one to take. Cotton's in probably the best position. Did well to keep feet and keep a play on it. McKinnon. Gee, there's some scrappy work going on out there at the moment. Out of bounds. The most interesting thing that's happened in the last couple of moments is that the, uh, the young footballers who play at half time have come out and sit, sitting down in front of us watching what's going on. But uh, as Stephen said, it has been extremely scrappy. Scott Lee. It's one of the criticisms, uh, Stephen and Michael, uh, that Robert Shaw has mentioned about Crows going back into the local comp is that Scotty Lee can come out on a halfback flank and pick up 20 or 30 touches at will and it doesn't really do much good. Better that he does it well and uh, doesn't do it well, though. I think some players have been selected on very poor form. On Michael, poor form, did you say? Well, we saw a module last week, Michael, yeah. and uh, was his form worthy of a promotion to the highest level in the land? Not at all. Central Muffet with her radar. Still has some time, though, to wheel around the corner. And another entry is going to be picked off, this time by Simister. What's Scotty doing at the moment? He's going for a bit of a wander. Let's look at Watkins. Good position and good mark. He is a good mark, isn't he? See what he can do with this disposal. That's easy. Gives it off to Simister, and the big man charges his way through half forward. Good spot at the back and beautifully done by Windsor. That's not an easy skill, and he did it very well. Well, he did it to perfection in the end, just back back into Woosland, but Woosland is doing absolutely nothing down there at full forward. So Jeff Morris really does need to make a change there. He's been unsighted, hasn't he? Yes, Windsor, formerly from the Bears, has played uh, up forward as well. Here's uh, Watkins storming over with Ingerson. Ingerson reaches over the top, and uh, Fear has given a free kick away. Ben Watkins taking it. So an important uh, passage here for West Adelaide. Goal would be very handy. Good strong mark by uh, Woosnam, the man that we were just talking about. Well, he leads well, and that's a, not a bad grab. He's had a couple of opportunities, particularly in the one-on-one -on -one contest, and has done nothing with it. Just needs to work a little bit harder when he's in that situation. Dean Woosnam within kicking distance you would think 35 metres out he's kicked a beauty no he's hit the post and he's done it quite spectacularly a lot of the uh, players underneath uh, were in the goal square thought that was a goal Michael yes would have been an important one for the Bloods just before half time would have given them uh, a bit more breathing space Ingerson doesn't quite complete the mark. He's had a quieter second term. Gets it to Schwert. McKinnon. Oh, look out, Marty. Did it well, though. Hasn't made a mistake today, McKinnon. To Potter. Half back to half forward. Can they get another one and uh, get it within a point? Just prior to half time. McMahon squeezes out towards Conway. Does well. Wine shouldn't have a problem now from 35 out and closing head down. And he has kicked it. So it's back to two points the difference. Well, he's kicked his second, and the blood's doing a lot of the attacking. And look at this, he sits in front of the play a little bit, Wine. Well, not a little bit, a lot, really. What's that mean? Well, he judged it very well. He had three players there, so there's no point of him going in there. So it was three on three, summed it up beautifully, and fortunately for him, the doggies got hold of the ball, and he got a walk-up goal. Second goal for Wine. 5-5 five, five, plays 5-7. West Adelaide in front by two points. We played 28 minutes and 14 seconds in the second quarter. Approaching half time. Watkins wins it clearly. Kilpatrick pulled off the footy, didn't have it. Gets a free kick from right in the middle of a very dry Elizabeth Oval. Glenn Kilpatrick, 22 year old. So what have we got on the goal square for West Adelaide? Not a lot of movement. He's decided to go short to Watkins. Watkins looks up, spots a player by himself, and that's Timothy Symes. And Symes inside 50 will go back, and you would think Michael Ashe would kick this. But they've been offline on a number of occasions. Well, they have. And Look at amazing that. Amazing how two 
big men can get by themselves without a Central Districts opponent within 20 metres of them. Plenty of concentration on the face of Timothy Symes as he doesn't have a long run up. Here's his kick. It's What's he done with that? He's missed to the near side. So they're really peppering away. They should be a lot further in front. 5-8-5-5. Five, five, five. Must be pretty close to time on, or at least to uh, half time. Mm. Well under time on. As Raymond Windsor brings it back into play. Close side, Ingerson. Some sweeping of the arms there. Simister couldn't take it. They're there in numbers, though. Kilpatrick does well. The further the game's gone, the better he's become. And his dispatch is very good. He's got Michael Godden in close. Well, this is one goal that they would love to get. An easy kick to Godden. And he's well within range. And he's kicked one to date, Michael Godden. Just 18 career goals. It's a good looking kick other than the fact the radar's off target. It's gone through from behind. It's an awful looking kick, really. Well, if the goals weren't there, it would have had its uh, right intention. Anyway, the bell is gone for Orange time at half time. And it's a pretty good game. We've got three points in it. Make that four points by virtue of that point. 39 to 35 on ABC Sport. The Bloods are in front. David Elliott I'm about to get things underway in the second half. What an important game this is for uh, West Adelaide. Desperately trying to uh, edge their way into the top five. Central District hoping to stay on top and uh, secure the minor premiership. And you were saying earlier, Michael, that there is a possibility that, uh, well, that they may not end up on the top of the ladder at the end of the minor round. You would think that they would. Uh, they're one and a half games in front at the moment. If they actually drop this game, and then Nord would have Sturt and South to come. And one would think that they would uh, actually pick those two up. And Centrals have to play Port and Albert. Here's Rymers now. And Rymers boots it up towards centre half back. Good contest there. Barrett's got it. Just got one a little high. Wind, or there might not have been anything in that. So Barrett from about 60 metres boots it well inside the 50. That's a good kick. The lead was terrific too by Simister well out in front of his opponent. Well, the lead was spot on, and uh, when we have a look at this, there is no Central District player popped into the spot there, which they just have to do. A Ruck Rover or a Rover need to get in there and just fill up the spot. He's got two goals, one on the first, one on the second, and he's pretty well straight in front, 40 metres out, generally a good kicker of the footy. He's just missed. Had the distance okay, but the accuracy not there. And he's kicked 56 for the season, and uh, that was one of the easy ones, along with Woosnan, the two top scorers for West. Woosnan had been injured, but uh, on 41, so they really do need to uh, make those count. So five points the difference. And Anthony Ingerson has gone to centre-half forward, where I'd have to say personally, I think he's better suited. Started the game very well for all that in the ruck. But I'd suggest, as I just have a quick look around the ground, that Damien Arnold must be now assuming that role. I've still got Rymers at the back. And they've got Herrera at the back picking up some of those talls down there. Free kick at half back. Bulldogs are going to take it. Roger Gurdam. Diminutive little skipper. Punches it towards centre wing. There is a little breeze out there. It's worth a couple to the right of screen. As Falcon gets well claimed and pinned to the ground. And the dogs with Ingerson back into the side with McKinnon, who, as we said earlier, has now qualified to play in the finals. Would be a very good pickup for the dogs, particularly in the back lines. Quick kick forward, half smothered. Herrera did exactly the right thing and attacked the ball. Morris and Barrett. Finally, it ends up with Carlson. There's some danger signs because Laird's let it out the back. Godden couldn't do anything with it. And as cool as you like, it's the agitator. Scott Lee from the centre right into the middle of the ground. Picked off by McMahon. Well done on the run and overlap by Symes to Filkey, who started on interchange. To half forward, and here now is Morris. 
being picked up by Laird. And Morris can't keep that one in play. It goes across the line. He looks all at sea at the moment. Morris, uh, that opportunity running into the ball there where Lee had it. No attack whatsoever. Just went around it. And he was all by himself there and just didn't read the kick in from Filkey whatsoever. Should have been a walk-up start. West by five points. Throw in right forward pocket. You're in attack. The doctor, they've got him. Wind out the back and then boots it away from that uh, half-back area. Filky kept his eye on the footy. Got tackled by Healy. Didn't have the footy. And the McGarry medalist will get a free kick. And send all of the action, I would say, to the front of the goal square. He does get a lead. He goes short. He ignores the lead and goes to Watkins. Watkins goes short again. Gee, they're indirect. Barrett's got it. He's tucked away in the forward pocket. They hardly going to think there, Aishi. Well, the option there with Barrett was if he just kicked it in front of him, he could have played on and had a shot for goal. Barrett goes short, and uh, they've got to Doc Wilden. So he's he's almost in the same spot that Barrett was in. This is ridiculous. So they've had four kicks, and they've really haven't achieved much at all. In fact, if anything, they've uh, worked their way further into that right forward pocket. So Doc Wielden, well, he's going to have a shot here. He's going to kick from about uh, 48 metres. Tight angle, he's pretty confident. Having a look at it from there, he's missed, uh, he's missed uh, quite considerably. It's through for a behind. So 5-11 to 5-5, what's that, 10 scoring shots to 16. They've had their chances, Michael. Certainly have, and the doctor's kicked one. It's a very difficult kick from that pocket in particular. Gurdum got it from the kick out and gave it to Lee. This is a better, far more positive piece of work to Stephen Schwert. His legs of his pumping away through the middle of the ground. Has a look up towards Conway. Not quite for the big fellow. Doesn't look like it at the moment. Mark Conway kicked three out here a couple of weeks ago against North Adelaide. Healy, left leg's pretty good. Gives Wakeman every good chance. Who was shoveled right in the centre of his hammer and tack. It's all Miller could do there. Caught well behind. And the nudge in the back. So another difficult an angle, and Wakeland, who's kicked two, but he's a very, very good kick for goal. Get a good look at that. But the angle is made worse by the fact that the breeze is over his left shoulder, so he goes in short. And Ingerson gets ridden into the ground also by Sines. What do you think, Michael? Is he better at centre-half forward, in the ruck? Where would you use Ingo? As we see the uh, Mark by Ingerson, beautiful lead. That's a difficult one, Stephen. We've seen him play some very good games in ruck. But uh, I tend to agree with you across half forward where he is very fit and can run, but he's not a goal-scoring centre forward, which may let the side down. I think one of those games you're talking about in ruck was we were out here in central bowled over port. Ingerson rides it. Not quite. So they get back within five points. 5-11, players 5-6. Well, with Simon Lewis out of the side with a dislocated finger, and uh, he is very good up forward, but then Alan Stewart has got the ability to throw the side around because of his balance. You're watching all of the action live on ABC TV Sport right around the state and up in the Northern Territory. We hope you're enjoying the broadcast of what has become a very important game for this side here. That's West Adelaide trying to edge their way into the uh, top five. Healy battling diligently. Good crowd. Certainly a bit more vocal now than they were uh, initially. Their side's right back in the ball game. Scott Stevens in the reserves again for the Bulldogs. And when you go through their side, they've got Coffey, Cassley, Abbott, Hicks, Green. As we see an interchange with Morris, as we said earlier, seemed all at sea. Good depth there, isn't there, Michael? Here's Green now from 35 metres, has a shot. Goes off the side of the boot, and uh, it's out of bounds in the right forward pocket. Back at Glenelg Oval, Mark Naley and David Mackay, and that is by far and away, at least to the midway term, or early in the third term, Sturt's best performance by for the year. The Tigers are in front by 17 points. Aren't they, aren't they having a horror season, so at Glenelg? Would cap off a very inglorious year for them, where they to go down to the double blues. Most sides are paranoid about losing to them at the moment, being the first side to. Meanwhile, Elizabeth Oval, Filky's going to get it. He looks better on centre wing. And that one's going to be picked off, though. Happens with Grantley sometimes, turns the ball over. But he's certainly doing better on Healy, who had the better of Chandler early in the game. 
as the kick to centre half forward without competition is taken by Stephen Schwert. Schwerty keeps it low, gives Wakeman a chance. He barrels it forward towards Green, who lost feet. Makes it difficult to do much from down there. Scott Lee well tackled, so too has Godden. And Cook with the momentum up, just pushed the player off the ball. But then was very quickly tackled by the Greek Adonis and Paul Patterson. West Adelaide with a very narrow lead. A couple of quick goals uh, would do their situation. A world of good, you would think, because uh, they are desperate in this game. They came out firing, opened up a reasonable break. This is uh, Hamilton, who kicked a brilliant goal in the first quarter. A reverse screwy. It was spectacular. Big Brian Hereda, unobtrusive. Solid then. Beautiful mark by Harada. Good kick too by Michael. It was pinpoint to Cotton. Stephen Trigg has been singing his praises. Boots it to toward right half forward. Chance for Sable. Gets it over the top to McKinnon. Now the door opens for a central district as McKinnon left foots it. Down ground, almost to the goal, and a big mark's been taken. It's a bulldog mark. Conway. So they have a big chance here. The big fella Conway right in the middle of that pack. Just far too tall, too tall and too strong. Haven't seen a lot of him, Michael, have we? I was saying that uh, also uh, a couple of Central District players, in particular Schwert, has been very quiet considering he normally picks up 35, 40 touches. Well, he should put this one through. He's got no problem at all with the distance or the accuracy. So the big man gets his first. And the Bulldogs go to the front, 42 to 41. Say well. Started on the interchange bench. McKinnon also in uh, defence early at full back. His pace and his long kicking is very good for the Bulldogs. And there we see Conway. A good mark and a good kick for goal. I would think that's the first time they've been in front. Would that be right? Spot on. Not by much, mind you. One point the difference. 6-6 six, six plays 5-11. It's a sign of a good quality side though, ten and a half minutes into the third term. They put their noses in front for the first time in the day and you feel as though they've been sluggish. Squeezes out towards centre wing where Herrera. Leg speed maybe not the great asset but he's still got the presence of mind to get back. The tackling's been very good today. McKinnon has been flawless, absolutely perfect today to Healy. Half forward flank. Ingerson's behind and it's pretty tough when you're behind against a man of Tim Symes' height, he's listed at 189 centimetres, but I'd say he's more like 193 or 4. Symes can kick a football as well. One carries 50. And honestly, McKinnon has played beautifully. He's qualified for the finals today, which is the good news for the Dogs. To wine. McKinnon's teammate, Ingerson, in both spheres, both at Adelaide and at Elizabeth. And that was very lucky. It's fallen into the arms of... Well, a former teammate at the Crows and Stephen Schwartz. So there's some real quality out there. Beautiful kick as he punches it into Conway. Conway producing the goods up at forward at the minute. A beautiful lead. Patterson desperately diving there. Can't cut it off. He's only 22 years of age, Mark Conway. But he has one. Not a bad looking kick. They have a lot of respect for Mark Conway at Elizabeth. They think he's going to be a great player of the future. And with that kick, he has extended the Bulldogs' lead to seven points. And the 12 minutes in, Schwert, after a pretty quiet first half by his standards, a beautiful kick, a good lead, and Conway is kicked a two in a matter of three or four minutes. So a bit of a danger sign here. This will be an important exit out of the centre. 7-6 to 5-11. So they're ruining their inaccuracies now, West Adelaide. They should have been well and truly in front, but they've kicked 11 behinds. Or at least eight or nine of them. A couple of them were rushed, of course. Ben Watkins, who's not hard to pick up. He's that gentleman there on his backside. About to get up, the giant Ruckman for West Adelaide. So another ball up in the middle. Umpire David Elliott sending things... Uh, moving once again but they don't seem to be moving all that far and he's going to have to work again David because he'll come in and ball it up almost in the middle of the Elizabeth Oval 
lot of grass around. It's uh, pretty dead. Dry conditions today, certainly. Oh. Here's Wine. Inside 50 now. Oh, they've got a big opportunity here. Cook picks up. He should bang it through. Left foot and belts it through for a goal. First goal to Timmy Cook. And they're on a march. They've got three in about four minutes. It's 8 6 5 11. And that is the sign of a good side, Michael, isn't it? When they can be under siege, struggling throughout the afternoon. I mean, they're not home yet, but they've really put the foot on the accelerator. Well, they have. There's no doubt that Coach Alan Stewart. We've had a the word at half time. And uh, they've certainly the put the foot on the, the pedal. And West Adelaide really do need to do something special to get out. Of. Coming up to 14 minutes into the third term. The Bulldogs' home ground at the Ponderosa. Gaining its nickname through Cowboy Neal's time. The expanses of Elizabeth Oval. Well laid down by Arnold. And that's a very good move by Alan Stewart because Arnold has done well on the ruck and Ingerson's competition and here he is again at centre half forward's been dynamic. The thing is, he just has a little too much mobility now for Symes and it's forced Jeff Morris's hand. As yet, Jeffrey hasn't done anything about it. That's a great tackle by Conway. Cook tries to squeeze it through. Ingerson's there. He's got a spare one forward. Can they squeeze it out? Not this time. As Filky flees half back and puts it towards Chandler, who's back on the ground. And Darren was banished. What was it, early in the second term? He was, and uh, very good grab in the end there. Simpson into midfield. Brooke Fogden needs it to sit. Does. Gee, he's a big man, isn't he? Just taking a bit of time. Boots it towards centre-half forward. Lee was there. Rymers as well. Gathers it nicely. Good skills. Around the corner to half-back. Oh. Saywell got a space, hasn't he? And then bangs it up toward right half forward. It's all Central District. Timmy Cook here. They can cap this off with another goal if they're uh, good enough. Up they go. And a fine mark taken by Wakeland. Good lead. Excellent kick. Well, we're singing the praises of the Bulldogs, but West Adelaide temporarily have lost the plot. They're not manning up. Well, it's as easy as you like. And uh, one thing that particularly worries me about West is their forward line really are too lazy. They don't create enough option and they don't work hard enough for a decent result. Now that's an interesting point given that everybody has been louding the fact that they have such a star-studded forward lineup. So you're thinking it might be a problem at the moment, isn't that an irony? Two, point, uh, two goals to Michael Wakeland. One in the first, one in the second. He's got it. Oh, it's an excellent kick. So another goal to Wakeland and another one to Central District. 9, 6, 5, 11. Well, Cook again, he's a live wire up there for the Bulldogs. He certainly creates the options. And look at that lead and mark again out in front. And when you've got a four that can do that and kick just as well, you are going to give yourself every chance of winning the ball game. 19 points the difference. And we're about halfway through this third term. Umpire puts it down in the middle. You will have noticed one of the umpires, number one, Tim Pfeiffer, cruising around out there with a cap on this afternoon. Just having a look at David Elliott in the middle of the ground there. Maybe David should have a cap on as well. In the nicest possible way, David. Middle of the ground, West Adelaide still can't get anything going as Cotton shovels it forward to Peter Green. Options are plenty. He looks to the left of screen and has a look at Raiklin, who provides another good one. Just too good at the moment. He's just sat beautifully on Melor. But doesn't it make it difficult if you're a defender to be able to read the ball when it's coming through so easily? And the West midfield players really have to do something about tightening up. So the man who many pundits are saying will be snapped up in the draft in November. Still has a very important role to play in the Bulldogs' finals campaign. He gets his fourth for the outing. And the Bulldogs get their tenth. Peter Green. Lovely kick. Has pinpointed Wakeland beautifully. And he's just fallen behind Mellor. Mellor, the full back, will play in front. But as I said, when the ball comes down like that, it's going to be very difficult. The difference in height between the two. Wakeland gets four. And uh, in a twinkling, West Adelaide have uh, their backs to the wall. 10, 6, 5, 11. 
They've remained stagnant on that score for quite some time. Here's Watkins, Chandler. She was Laird. You don't get past Laird too often, as the Kilpatrick just found out. Gurdon working feverishly, and uh, there'll be a ball up. And the crowd certainly coming to life now. Well, look at that. The Tigers are in front by just 11 points. And the double blues are real stiff. You'd imagine, Mark, they'd be very buoyed by that. Well, that, uh, on paper, looks as though it's their best performance for the year. No doubt about it. That ball travelling very quickly past Lee. Now Rymers. Too much leg speed for Simister. Lee. Cool. Laird. He provided a good bump earlier on. Back to Lee, getting another stat. Picking a kick up that time. Oh, oh. Good mark. That's a spectacular mark by Cotton. He's a good player, isn't he? He's really uh, come alive in the latter stages of this season. Up goes Wake on a spectacular leap there. This is Green, 35 metres out. Is it another goal for Central District? No, it's not. He's well offline. Good build up there. Well, Cotton. You would have paid that, and uh, he's gone down with two West opponents practically lying on top of him. He's actually just got up and uh, belted it forward. Reasonably warm day. And one of the first days of warmth that the players have had to contend with as we lead into the finals. 25 degrees, well done by Healy. Made some space for himself and then hit the post. We talked about Wakeland being drafted. The other feeling about town is that Healy will be high up in that list of draftees, Michael, as well. Well, he's a fine player, a left footer, beautiful skills, particularly by foot. Pinpoints kick the good, will kick a ball 50 metres, pinpoint accuracy. 26 points the margin. Greg Mellor straight down the middle towards centre half back. Ball ricochets to the side of the pack. Golden tackle well. Then goes in and does some rough stuff himself. Healy, player we were just talking about. Well, that's a a bit high. Gee, it looks high from here. West Adelaide sorted out though. Fogden away from the danger zone. Here's Watkins. Awkward kick. Gains 40 metres. Hamilton's the target down there. McKinnon, who's played magnificently. Hamilton over the top. Simister. Can they manufacture something from here? Big Brian Hareda does very well. He did superbly there. Simister is pleading with the umpire. But uh, the big man has uh, got himself a free kick and uh, 25 metres. Well, the Bloods have worked hard for a half. They probably think their job's done. And that is very ordinary work by Chandler in particular there. He just did not provide the shepherd. That's all he had to do for Simister to get hold of the ball and have a shot for goal. So Herrera now from half back into the midfield area. Big pack, but no mark taken. Lee gets it across to his teammate, Gurdon, back to Lee. Good work, got his head pulled off, gets a free kick in the middle. He's played pretty well today, the agitator. Loves cruising out of half-back and trying to set things up. Parade has been a good adversary as well, as he puts it up towards half-forward. Not quite by Ingerson, it's a good mark by Fogden. At half-back. I think because, Stephen, of the, the crowd, a lot of highlights have, have almost gone gone missing because uh, there's been no atmosphere. No, not many West Adelaide fans have made uh, the trip to Elizabeth Oval. It's a good take by Chandler. <laughs> and well, I think he copped one high. Well, a bit of an act there as well, I would think. It's not bad coming from you, seeing you're in the budget, dressed up as Michael Jackson. How did you go? Did you sing a song? No, I didn't, actually. It just mimed and uh, did it pretty ordinary. Barrett has Wielden on 50. And this is one of the few entries they've had for the term. Bulldogs have been all over them in kicking five goals and two behinds. Wielden, if you joined us at the head of the show, you would have seen him engaged in some fairly fiery work. Firstly with Peter Green and then with Roger Gurdam and Ray Windsor. One thing you say about the doctor is that he has a go at it. A little bit of a waddle. Doesn't make much difference though because that is a magnificent kick right to the line. The goal umpire will grandstand it. You can bet on that and put up two fingers. Come on. Put us out of our misery. He has. So West Adelaide get another one. They get their sixth on the board. But there's not much from the crowd. 10-7 plays 6-11. Good lead by Wooden. And he does give 100%. He likes a bit of fire. 
And that is a good kick from 55. Just made the distance. So maybe the blood can get started in this third term. Well, they need to, Michael. They're 20 points down as the dock uh, has some uh, relief. And so does um, the big Ruckman. Wakeland with four. Wind and Conway with two apiece for Central. And Wilden hits the list for West Adelaide. So it's 10 7 to 6 goals, 11. Up to half forward again now. Kilpatrick, Schwert with him, harassing him. Kilpatrick boots it off the ground. And what's happening here? The whistle's gone. The free uh, kick for free hanging kick on. Go back. He's yes. been uh, a bit quiet in this third term. Kilpatrick had a reasonable first half. But Kilpatrick. Gets things moving for West Adelaide, bangs it long. Oh, Simister, big mark. At the back, three deep. Again, his second for the day. Three back, judged it to perfection. And Huey Remus, just a little bit of a step ladder there. Was never going to miss that. Has two goals, one on the first and one on the second. And this will get to West Adelaide to within 14 points. Directly in front, 30 metres out. Perhaps a shade less than that. I don't think he's made a mess of that. No, he hasn't. So the goal umpire having to work overtime here in the last couple of minutes. Down that end, 10-7 to 7-11. Kilpatrick, the recruit from the Bombers, number 27. One of the favourites of the McGarry Mary, Mary, medal, that's it. <laughs> I'll get it out. And Simister, a lovely kick and a lovely mark. Shouldn't be that hard to talk about, Michael. 15 years now, nearly since yours. Telecast live, of course, throughout this state and the Northern Territory on ABC Sport, the Aussie Football Show. We're just on time on in the third term. The Bulldogs are 10-7, but West have grabbed a couple back. They're on 7-11 to make it 14 points the difference and keep very much the interest in the game. Chandler laid the tackle on Cook. And the Bloods have the momentum up, pushed forward. Hamilton, can he produce something special? I suspect not while McKinnon is there, although Marty lost feet this time and was very lucky to get a free kick. Very lucky indeed, very soft. And they can certainly hurt you in a game. What value uh, a big name player in getting free kicks? Oh, it can be, but uh, I suppose if you've got nose over the ball and you're in front, you've obviously got more chance of getting the ball or getting the free kick paid. Fair point. As some shepherding goes on just off the ball, and the ball will go back, and the Bulldogs will get it at half back with Tim Cook. Cookie has a look, goes to the middle of the ground. Oh, just in a nick of time. It fell into the arms of Scott Lee. Lee has the run provided by Schwert. And then on to McKinnon to half forward. The kick is beautiful. Falls straight into the arms of Healy. Hasn't he had a belt of McKinnon? And so has Healy. Healy's kick is just perfect. Lace out. And we saw Wakeman pass off from here. Will he have a shot now? And the kick from Healy was spot on. And would you love to be a full forward in front of Healy, Cook, Schwert? Schwert can go through half the side. And McGowan, when he's playing now, Wakeman, whilst that replay was being rolled, just handed off back to Healy. And he will shoot from about 55 metres, so it will test the leg. Puts it right up there, gives it a chance. Can someone take the big mark down there? They certainly can. Anthony Ingerson takes it two metres out. Well, he's coming from the side. And there's a pack of players there. There he is. Just on the side, two grabs. Fine mark. I wouldn't um, grandstand it too much, but... I reckon that this guy could be the difference between the Bulldogs going all the way and having a failed tilt at the final. Not a bad slogan, that. All the way. Some like it, some don't. Let's have a look at Ingo from about five metres out. Kicking has been under question at certain times. But you have to do very poorly to miss it from the goal square. He's got it, and the Bulldogs have got their 11th. 11-7 plays 7-11. Well, the Bulldogs have kicked six goals for the term. And Healy, two touches. We had the option, bombed it down. And there he is, number 57. Played a lot of games for the Crows. Central Districts, they'd love to have him inside. And they've got him for the finals. Quick update from the Bay, where Sturt were challenging, but all of a sudden, Glenelg have 
broken away to be 27 points clear. We'll be crossing down uh, to uh, talk to the boys uh, very shortly. Here's Green. Pushes it down toward right half forward. Good contest there. Fogden got it moving. Morris, who now appears to be playing in defence, whips it out wide. Carlson getting onto it. Barrett. Symes his target. Arnold with him. Ball out of bounds on that far side. What a beautiful day. 25 degrees. Warm conditions. One of the uh, first uh, warm days we've had for quite some time. Very wet winter. And cold and blustery. Not so today. 28 and a half minutes gone. Haven't seen a lot of Bannock. There he is there, number 28 for West Adelaide. McKinnon. Healy. Filkey. Bit of experience there with McKinnon coming in as well. Oh, well done by McKinnon. Oh, he's just a bit disappointed. The umpire comes across and says, I better have a go at this, David Elliott. And uh, he's going to uh, ball it up. Certainly is a beautiful day. We've got a crowd of just under 4,000. And I suspect that the vast majority of those are Central District supporters enjoying the sunshine and enjoying a very good revival from their side who have broken away to a 20-point margin ingerson that's copybook work the check side ruck work series of quick handballs and they work it away from the congestion he is wind always very dangerous close to goals around the body he's got wakeland who takes a good mark under very very heavy pressure it was of that Ooh. and a bit high by paul patterson Maybe a little bit uh, seedy there, or definitely a little bit seedy. I'm sure he'll get up. He's kicked 49 goals for the season, so he'd like to put through his 50th, which I would think he would do from there. It's pretty courageous stuff too, wasn't it? Because you could see them both uh, in the general vicinity. Stephen Schwartz just having a quiet word. It's also an impressive thing about the Bulldogs. They have a little bit of calm about them. There's enough seniority out there to just cool the turgid waters from time to time. As Wakeland has a look at it, he's not deterred by getting that wrap around the skull because he's put it through for number five, Michael. Number five, and I should say it, he's actually played 45 games. I just couldn't quite read that, and uh, 36 goals for the season. I mean, you couldn't quite read it. But the way he's going, he should kick um, his 50 before the season's out. Pretty clear to me, Michael. Anyway, another one to Wakeland. His fifth. Back in the centre. 4,000 here, hey? 31 uh, minutes into the third quarter. So three quarter time is uh, imminent. Bannock. Oh, look at Gurdon just crashing through. Real blitzkrieg. Ooh. Oh, gee whiz, that was courageous because he caught one after he got rid of it. Down ground looking for Conway again. Simpson gets it out the back. Chandler into the back pocket. A searching kick. Finds McKinnon. Filky, plenty of experience. That hand pass was a bit ordinary. Didn't give Fogden much of a chance. He's a push. And as you can quite clearly hear in the background, there's a lot of booing going on. So it's a West Adelaide free kick. It'll go to the McGarry medalist. Filky into the midfield region. Another push out. That was pretty clear, wasn't it? Roger Gurdon will get the free kick. Plays on. Advantage uh, rule. Hamilton. Sable comes at him. Squares it towards centre half forward. Big Brian Harada. Look away hand pass. Meant for Lee. Symes pushed off the footy. Good pressure. Oop. That was a little bit ordinary there by Windsor and hits the post. Good effort though by Carlson, the wingman. Wins are just a bit casual. And uh, great work by Watkins there, just tapping the ball out in front of Carlson. Good work for a big man, good thinking. And unfortunately for Carlson, he uh, hits the post. Short pass has found Saywell onto the ground for the first time. One of the interesting observations from the game is that I'd say there's been half a dozen free kicks that have been paid 50 metres from where the ball is. I think the umpires have been given the strong word about picking up infringements that are away from the play. 
meantime, Central District have got it with some free-flowing movement. Peter Green towards half forward, but he's going to be spoiled though in terms of the siren going. Central District have won eight of their last nine. They are in outstanding form. Alan Stewart has got them going along very, very nicely. 12 7 to 7 goals, 12. Welcome to the telecast. If you've just joined us, Watkins wins the tap. West Adelaide need to do something and quickly. Barrett running the wrong way, swings it round the body. As a result, it's turned over quickly. Cotton got it from Wine. Healy now. Ingerson, good mark. Well out in front of his opponent. He's just outside the 50. Good work by Ingerson. Chandler coming at him late. But Ingerson uh, with a couple of metres. A lot of experience. The 25 year old has one goal one. This would be a dream start for them. Ingerson, not the best kick in the world. And I guess that showed it quite clearly. A big pack into the air. No mark. McKinnon. Oh dear, that's a terrible kick by the experienced campaigner. He was under a bit of pressure though. And uh, Stephen Schwert is right in front of goal, 50 metres out. And uh, has a big chance here to uh, put another one on the board, although he is looking around. I don't think he could kick, kick it from there. Having said that, he'll probably boot it 60 metres and straight through the middle. It's not a bad sort of a kick either. There's a mark. It is a central district mark. It's big Conway again. He's providing a real problem for them late in this quarter, or late in this game, Michael. Well, he is, and uh, he's kicked two in that third term with two strong marks. He's done it again this quarter. And the big man strength of the Bulldogs is very evident. You can see the angle. It's tight, but he gets it. No, he misses. Well, everyone thought he got that. 12-8, 7-12. Almost two minutes gone in the last quarter. Paul Patterson waiting for the ball to be retrieved. Been around for a long, long time. Played 184 games, kicked 98 odd goals. Plenty of experience, played with the Crows. And is a seasoned campaigner, probably in the twilight of his career. Well, he is for sure, you would think. And here he is, booting it out from fullback. To half back he goes. As Stephen Schwert is lurking, punches it back up there, gives them another chance. Wakeland is a jumbuck. He loves to get off the deck. Cook, Green, it would take something pretty good from there, and that's just what it is. He's pretty happy about it as well. The Bulldogs get their 13th, and Greeny gets his first for the outing. Well, he certainly gets excited, but why wouldn't you? That is a beautiful kick for goal around the body. Schwert tried to pick off Wakeland. And maybe a bit high in the end. Cook crumbed well. Look at that. Did not even look. Just round the body and split the centre. Good <laughs> start. He's pretty keen about that, isn't he? Conway, the man having to take the weight. Peter Green gets his first. Central District explode out to a 32-point lead. Barrett in a bit of trouble. Peter Green gets his hand to it. Bannock trying to get a handle on the footy. P Green now over the top. Good sense of anticipation. Cotton. Hand passes OK. Healy into the pocket. Wakeland. Whistle goes. Another free kick off the ball. Gee, we've seen a lot of those. So Wakeland is looking to just uh, ping it off somewhere. The 23-year-old. No, he's going to go back and have a shot. Not too far out. He's only about 30 metres, but he's on a tight angle. Oh, he's kicked a brilliant goal. Oh, that's a gem. He's got six. Well, chock full of confidence, the Bulldogs at the moment. And West LA just chasing Guernsey since quarter time. And a cute angle but that has split the centre. So the Bulldogs well on the way to winning this one and wrapping up top spot for good. 
have a quick look at some of the AFL outings that have been occurring over this weekend starting last night. Wasn't it a tight one last night at the G when Collingwood just got home. We'll bring those scores to you very shortly. Hope you can stay with us on ABC Sport. This is the Aussie footy show and we are five minutes into the last term. Roger Gurdon in an interview in the SA football budget. Just to be sidetracked for a moment. Interesting that the umpire should be wearing a cap, isn't it? Roger Gurdon in the football budget last week made a wry comment that he does ask the umpires for advice from time to time on the ground. As McMahon gets it to half forward, Herrera, the flying mare across the top, and Carlson should go for holding the ball. He does. Yes, two Central District players just wrapped him up. Had nowhere to go, Carlson. And that player in particular, Gurdon. His attack and effort each week is second to none. Interesting dilemma coming up for the Bulldogs. They have the minor premiership secured at the end of this game, it would seem anyway, at this stage. And they'll snare the Foundation Cup at the same time. But the dilemma for them is that they'll have the first weekend of the finals off and the last round is a bye for them. So how they manage that is going to be very tricky. A little push in the back. And 25 metres, that's a little soft as well as Pyman went into the back of little bloke out there in Hamilton. Just talking on that, Stephen, I think the side, particularly with Alan Stewart, is far too disciplined to let that worry them. And I think they'll settle down pretty quickly. Hamilton's kick right up to the teeth of the goal square, smashed forward in towards some space. This is the thing the Bulldogs do very, very well. They clear it from defence, but West Adelaide this time are a chance to turn it over. Yes, and uh, they certainly need to because they are in dire straits here as Filky goes short and he finds his teammate Greg Mellor who gives it across to Simpson and Simpson from about 60 metres to the goal square two on one down there oh what about this if he kicks this no he missed it Simister I thought he was going to kick a spectacular goal he has another go at it and this time he kicks it out of bounds on the full let's have a look at those AFL scores as we know Collingwood last night well, I would love to know whether the free kick or the uh, the mark was going to be paid or not, or whether the siren went first last night before Dunstall took what was a pretty good-looking mark. West Coast have beaten Melbourne by 29 points. And we are at Elizabeth Oval. Essendon beats St Kilda by around about 76 points. In fact, spot on, 76 points. Carlton got over North Melbourne by 19 points. No surprises in Geelong beating Fitzroy, the beleaguered Fitzroy, by 41 points. West Adelaide with possession. Bannock, too far out to score, squares it toward the front of the goal square. Simister battling down there, one-handed. Now loses the footy. They've got him, they're putting him under a lot of pressure. Three or four Bulldogs, well done by Huey Rymers. Slips over at the critical time. Tries to knock it further forward. They work it out OK now, Lee under a bit of pressure. And as a result, it's out of bounds on the full. Scotty Lee just erring there, but uh, he was being wrapped up good and proper. Done very well. What about this man, Ben Watkins? 45 metres out, kicks to the goal square again. Windsor, Wind, McKinnon, who's played flawlessly, out wide. Schwert way over the top, Healy and he's away. He's got no one within Cooey of him. He runs through the uh, midfield area and then pushes it towards centre half forward. That was good footy because Wakeland's on the end of it. It was another good lead. He goes in short and they are killing them at the moment because Ingerson smack bang in front and West Adelaide are a rabble. We just missed the replay of the mark by Wakeland, but how easily did he just push Chandler aside, just nudged him? and took a sitter. So, Ingerson, a short kick from Wakeland. Shouldn't have any problems with this. He's going to kick from about 45 minutes, or 45 metres, I should say. There's Ingerson's kick, and he's smashed it through the middle. So his second goal for the day, and they're a lot happier now here at Elizabeth. It's 15, eight to seven goals, 12. And we just saw Godden limping off the ground very badly and being replaced by Morris who's been on and off through the interchange gate quite a considerable number of times. I've had a doubt about Wakeland Michael before now. I felt that just maybe in big games there'd be a little question mark there, but he's been under a fair bit of heat today and he stood up to it very, very well. 
Yes, I'm sure it, uh, coming into the finals that uh, things may get a little bit hotter for him, but uh, he's performed to date, and I'm sure if they uh, bring the ball down like they do and get hold of it midfield, they will do very well. And stay tuned coming up after this game, the Bays versus Sturt down at Glenelg. Ten minutes into this final term, 15-8, plays 7-12. Glenelg versus Sturt, yes. Think back a little while, 1974, didn't they put on a perler in the grand final? I'm not sure whether it's quite of that grand proportions today. Have Elizabeth Oval, West Adelaide have a little run on. Filkey's up the front, he will or will not be used. Finally, Barrett has a look at him, and then Filkey launches himself at it. A wobbly old floater. Wouldn't like to be up the front of that. Bulldogs are there in numbers. Woosnam's had a dirty day. Yeah. Hamilton runs into some trouble and is very fortunate to get one across the shoulder. It's a very flattering view. Well, there's no question that he was caught high. But they make hard work of it consistently. Wilden he had nowhere to go. Their defence is so tight. Pyman just gets him a little high. So Bomber Hamilton from the point of the gold square at the northern end here at Elizabeth Oval. Sneaks it through for his second. And you don't hear a murmur from the crowd. 15-8, the Bulldogs. West Adelaide, a little respectability are 8-12. Well, they've kicked four since quarter time. So disappointed Jeff Morris. Wilder nearly throws it out. We've got Remus, Pyman. And he's got nowhere to go. Mm. And unfortunately for Pyman, just gets caught a little high. As Hamilton's off and woos them to come back on. So the margin, 38 points. Central District enjoying what uh, appears to be the match winning lead 98 to 60 15 8 plays 8 goals 12 the Bulldogs in command in front of their fans here Bannock scrambling kick Healy hits the ground running there's a couple of twirls Simpson or was that McKinnon no it was McKinnon's fist Filkey Lee two experienced campaigners there battling it out Carlson's got the footy now good shepherd provided by Morris and a good chip pass is okay. Woosnam, 50 metres, keeps it low. Short circuited down there by Rymers. Goes in again, they've got a chance. Sire, Simister, and Simister's kicked a goal. So two goals in a couple of minutes, three for Simister in the match. 15, 8, 9, 12. Just a mini fight back here from West Adelaide. Ashley, you're shaking your head during that passage of play? Well, I've said it three times today that Morris was in the spot and he's probably been the guy that's been there at least two or three of the times just sitting there perfectly and they've missed him every time. Two out of those times they're fortunate enough to get a goal but their vision is just terrible. And we're live of course throughout South Australia in the Northern Territory as we have been for 23 minor rounds. We have two more to go after this one before we settle in to the real stuff in the finals. Really looking forward to that. It's going to be a classic contest right through the month. And the ABC sport team will bring you all of the games. These two teams, last time they met, Central District pulverised West Adelaide by 95-odd points. The first time they clashed through the year, it was a draw. It's a far cry from that at the moment because the Bulldogs are in charge. Filky, I reckon he's been cleaned up by Healy after a keen tussle early up it goes half a chance beautiful spoil by Pyman I don't, don't believe that I thought it was a good one it was a beautiful spoil Woosden made the lead and that is disgraceful I know we've got the hindsight of replay but uh, he's just punched and hit him in the side well I was going to say that exactly it just felt that whilst the momentum was up and Pyman ran into him that by that stage, Woosnam was side on. Anyway, Dean has a chance for his first, and he gets it. So West Adelaide are into double figures. They get their 10th. The and we'll have a look at that again. Filky, good work. Practically throws it out to Barrett. And on the left foot, a good lead. And that is a very, very ordinary decision by the umpire. But they've been pretty good today. They've made too many mistakes, but uh, Central Districts have made all the play. You've been happy with them, Michael? 
Yes, well, I think that they've umpired the game pretty well, and obviously they're going to make a few mistakes, and that was one of them. Well, I'll let Ron, uh, David and Tim know after the game. I know they'll be interested in that. 15-8 to 10-12. David Mackay uh, also gives his opinion on umpires. Gives them a bake occasionally. When they do well, though, he's uh, honest enough to admit it. Saywell. Central District with a chance here to score a covering goal. The margin at the moment is 26 points. West Adelaide work it out though, up towards centre wing. And Big Arnold just wanders over the line with a footy. Now it's Windsor. Throw in right in front of us. Central lead by 26 points. West Adelaide just fighting back a little in the last five or six minutes. Another free kick off the ball. Umpire says, play it on, fellas. West Adelaide's advantage. Crowd don't like it, obviously. Barrett, short chip pass is a good one, but a bad mistake by Symes. Should have wrapped that up, and both of my co-commentators just uh, shaking their heads in disbelief. Well, just a little bit too lazy. Had it wrapped up, just took it too easy towards the end, and they tend to do that a little bit, the big fellas for West. Neutral ball. And once again, <laughs> Central win it. Now, Roger, I'm not too sure what you were trying to do there. I guess, in essence, he was trying to get around the player, but the skipper's kicked it out of bounds on the full as number 10. Most experienced player for the Bulldogs, 208 games. 87 goals in a career that includes the Tompkins medal. And he's been a wonderful contributor. Grant Filkey. Speaking of well-decorated players, gets it to half-forward, Lee. Good body work in there with Wielden. Watkins picked out Raymond Windsor absolutely perfectly. Windsor's kick to the middle of the ground where Ingerson is going to do battle with Fogden. Just gave Healy the slip, beautifully done by Saywell. A pleasure to watch that as he got it on in turn towards uh, Lee. Now Green's going to have another look. Watch for the demonstrative uh, Green. If he gets it, he doesn't for behind so 15-9 the Bulldogs just waiting for a war dance in case he got it well the build-up was spot on and Green just checked his stride took it a little bit easy towards the end but you'd normally wrap those up and good work by Scott Lee out of defense there particularly in the packs they are very good good hands Healy and Mark they've covered McGowan pretty well a very important player for them but They've covered the centre square very well. Yes, he's uh, had a pretty good year, hasn't he, McGowan? Always provides an option in the middle. Conway, just another good grab. And uh, look at their big man strength. It really is fantastic. Conway's kicks a beauty. 30 metres down ground. Wakeland. Getting back to uh, McGowan, he's a very good kicker of the footy and uh, hasn't been as missed as they might have thought today. There's Wakeland's kick and he's missed. Well, he had a shot very similar to that, probably in a worse position earlier on. And he's just dragged that to the near side. But he is a very, very good focal point for the Bulldogs. Gives them plenty to shoot at. Plenty of whistle blowing going on out there as Patterson puts the size 12 into it. Carries about 45 metres. Ingerson spoils it away. Barrett. I think that's where West Adelaide need a little more from the types of Barrett and Godden because when Kilpatrick's covered up, it's very hurtful. The ball's half smothered. Say well. Gurdham never shirks the issue and then puts in a very incisive handball. Just sits up nicely for Windsor. His short pass, a little too far for Wakeman. It's very helpful for Fogden, who'll go for holding the ball. Unfortunate for the big fella. He just thought he was out of reach of Wakeland. He's bounced it. And, well, he hasn't summed that up too well. And Wakeland, well, he'll have a shot from the opposite side this time. And this will be a very good kick for goal. If he gets that. Wouldn't put it beyond him. Certainly has some ability. Intelligently, though, puts it to the head of the square. Healy off hands. It's a quick kick forward at it. I thought that it bounced off the post, but it just took a break left. Into a hole in centre-half forward. 
danger spot for West Adelaide and Stephen Schwartz is, well he's gone for holding the ball and I think it was on request from a couple of bloods. Well the crowd very silent on that decision so they must have agreed with the umpires. McKinnon now he's going to find himself in trouble because he was outnumbered there two to one. Green turns it around. Healy left footer 35 out bangs it through that's the sealer. First goal to Healy. 16-10 to 10 goals, 12. Daniel Healy, number 51. An absolute beautiful kicker of the football. Look at that, three steps on the left foot. Kicks it 50 metres straight through the centre. So if he can fire up for the Bulldogs coming into the finals, Michael Wakeland will get plenty of the ball. So Michael Wakeland continues to do well up forward. And Healy, with that goal, has made an impact. 20 and a half minutes in as Watkins lays it down. 16-10, plays 10-12. And Wielden just took it a little too easily, perhaps, and then went after Scott Lee just quietly. Didn't quite connect. Well done by McKinnon. Got it away. There's going to be a clash of bodies here. Well done by both boys in Watkins and Ingerson. Both a little sore. It's a tough contest at about the 20-minute mark of the last term. Up it goes forward. Good mark taken by Simistar. A magnificent pair of hands when he sets himself. Well, he has very athletic again, jumping from behind. It's his third take. He's been West's best forward today and all year, obviously, with the amount of goals 58 for the season. So, Scott Simister, beautiful kick. The start of the day with 56, and he's got a bit of a limp up. He's got another one to give West Adelaide their 11th. That is a very good mark. Ream is just getting caught under the football again. And a lovely kick for goal. The Bloods, <clears throat> too late. Ingerson and Wat Watkins preparing as the uh, Central District fans are... Uh, Full voice. Yes, they uh, seem to be pretty happy. I know they've got this one in the bag. 16-10, plays 11-12. Ball back in the centre. Watkins in from the right. Kicked out of mid-air there by Schwert. Good body work by uh, Gerd, and that was terrific stuff. Sewell releases him, and Sewell gets run down, though. Carlson had too much pace for him. Cotton has a shot, misses. Listen to the... Disappointment in the crowd there because that was a very significant build up, Michael Aish. Well, it was a good build up, but their worth ethic is twice what West's is, and in particular, their captain, Roger Gurdam, the way he attacks the footy and attacks the opponent when he's got the ball is really quite brilliant. Good bump. And uh, the West Adelaide players should take a leaf out of his book. Yes, it was a good bump, wasn't it? There's Paddo's kick to a pack of players. Ingerson at the back knocks it to Peter Green. Schwert, good work there by the body of Symes. Gurdam in there again, Michael. Well, we're 24 minutes into this final term and Roger Gurdam does not give up in any contest. And that is very good for young kids to look at. And he is a very fine skipper and a very fine player. Leads by example, a tough competitor, Roger Gurdam. Green, searching hand pass to Sewell, who runs onto the bouncing ball and then boots it into the forward pocket. It may be out of bounds on the full, it is. So they've been, I think, a little disappointing, West Adelaide. I know, um, I know they had a few shots early, Michael, and they could have been three or four or five goals up, but um, they've had patches where they've been OK, but generally they've been disappointing and they've had so much to play for. Well, they kicked five in that first term, uh, that first half yeah. of kick six for the rest of the day, but uh, Central Districts really just have piled on the, the pressure since half-time and run away with the game. Arnold was the big uh, leaper there, and he's got the... Oh, it's Windsor again. He was the man that was the high flyer. Wind over the top, Healy. Can he cap it off with a goal? Falls over at the wrong time. As a result, West Adelaide repel it. Morris towards centre-half back. They run to the ball. Lee got caught. Carlson, likewise, gets it off. Symes desperately trying to do something constructive. Gets it to uh, his big ruckman, Fogden, who boots it into midfield. Filky and Cotton. 
Cotton's been a bit quieter in the second half, but uh, both Stephen and Michael have uh, been singing his praises. Coming good at the right time of the year, that's for sure. McKinnon goes for a run, the season campaigner, and uh, just pinpoints Melor, who from 50 metres has a shot, and it's touched. Simister trying to do something constructive with it. There's a lot of messing about in the goal square there, isn't there? The defence of Central District on full alert. Simister again around the corner, having another shot. And in the end, the doctor's got it in the forward pocket as Simister gets a helping hand short. Oh, it's yeah. a terrible kick. Well, they'll wrap this up, won't they, Central District? Look at that. That's just brilliant stuff, isn't it? And it's poor by West Adelaide. This is Windsor, who's having a good little patch of about uh, five or six minutes where he's had a lot of touches. Wakeland, who's had an outstanding day. Well, he's got such great hands, Michael Wakeland. And when you lead and as quick as he is, you get plenty of the ball. Five goals to him, and he's just a uh, short pass to Windsor, who's uh, running all over the, uh, the Ponderosa here. He'll kick from about 40 metres, straight in front. You would think another goal to... Uh, the Bulldogs. Mello just not quick enough towards the end there. Sitting in the square was Simister and just left it too long to get it onto him. Should have had a shot for goal. Central taking on Port next week. That'll be a beauty at the Albert and Oval. Central will be cherry ripe for that after this performance. Is Raymond's kick. Made an awful mess of it. But you'd expect that, Michael, because uh, I played him up. Yes, that's what normally happens. And Ray Windsor, well, he has played a lot of football at full forward and at full back. Such is the side with uh, the Bulldogs. Coach Alan Stewart can play them in numerous positions. Chandler, 40 metre kick. In trouble, McMahon. He hasn't been all that prominent, McMahon. Started well early, mm. threw his body around, but uh, fell out of the game, as has a lot of the West Adelaide players. Stephen Schwert, one of the fittest players with the Crows when he was with them, and uh, no doubt with the local comp. Cook, 35 metres out, has a shot, and misses. Well roved by Cook there, in the perfect spot. And coming up shortly, the big match at the Bay, Glenelg versus Sturt. It's with uh, David Mackay and uh, Mark Naley. Hasn't uh, Naley had a lot to say this year in the media. There's a goal, another one. The skipper. Roger Gurdon. One of the best players in the local comp. 17, 11, 11, 12. And the kick out of defence. Well, beautifully read by Saywell. And the handball, see the support of Central Districts is first class. They get numbers to the fall of the ball. And that was so easy for the skipper. First goal for Roger. So a comprehensive win coming up now for Central District. West Adelaide falling well away. They're 11 goals, 12. And the Bulldogs continue with their good form in 1995. Schwert had it and lost it. That was a quick hand pass, wasn't it? Bannock, high kick, Morris. Kept his eye on the footy. He's got a chance here. No one uh, within metres of him, and he bangs it through. Just runs into the open goal as easy as you like. So a belated goal to West Adelaide, 17-11 to 12-12. And Phil Morris hasn't had the best of days that he would like. He's still a very fine player. And that's well done. Read it beautifully, just tapped it forward. Knew he was under a bit of strife. Just run onto the ball. Could have handballed over the top to Simister. Took the right option. So too late for West Adelaide. A bit later on, of course, uh, Port Adelaide and South. So South Adelaide with the knowledge that West Adelaide has lost. South in fifth position. 29 minutes. Last quarter here at Elizabeth Oval. We'll be going to the Bay very shortly for that game between... Glenelg and Sturt, the uh, Double Blues were doing pretty well. Another entrance into the Central District forward line. Here's Timmy Cook again. Just feeds it off. Can they score a goal? Oh, McKinnon under enormous duress there. 
And the West Adelaide defence just having to work it out themselves through Carlson. Squirt over the top, another goal coming up. Conway, drop punt, and he has missed everything. Missed absolutely everything, Stephen Trigg. Yes, he has. Three goals a couple of weeks ago here against North Adelaide. And the big fellow, well, he's provided an option. Two goals in the third term today. And he is just another one of the tools to add to a very lengthy list of Hugh Reimers, Brian Herrera, Richardson and Coffey, of course, are in the reserves. So they have plenty of riches. West Adelaide. They had a forward thrust once again. Fogden got an awkward bounce. It was a tough one to take. Well tackled by Gurdham. He's a little terrier, isn't he? Just keeps on working. McMahon, a bounce. Lifts the eyes and has a look. There are plenty of Bulldogs down there. And I was speaking about the tools, Michael. Here's another one, Hugh Reimers. He's one of the good ones for the Bulldogs, and there are just too many of them. Conway, you've mentioned. Reimers, Herrera. They've just got plenty of depth and plenty of talent. So time fast running out now. Patterson takes a good mark at the back. Full time approaching. He just concedes a little ground, goes to Simpson. He's searching down ground for Chandler. Well anticipated by Sable, who's done a couple of pretty good things since coming on. Gurdham gets it to Cook. The two little men combine. I'll cap it off.